Hello everyone, my name is Sue Robertson and I am the Knowledge Services Development Lead working across Health Education England in the South. I'm also part of the HEE team that has been working on our new NHS LKS Quality and Improvement Outcomes Framework. And this recording is the first webinar that supports Outcome 3. I have the pleasure of being in Taunton today with Natalie Parsley. I am with Natalie to interview her and ask her to share a practical example of a service improvement in her role here in Taunton. But before we hear more about this quality improvement, I will ask Natalie to say a little bit about herself. Natalie, please tell us what do you do and where do you work? Um, hello, Sue. Hi, everyone. Um, I am a library assistant at the library service at Musgrove Park Hospital. We are the Taunton and Somerset NHS Foundation Trust, but our trust also serves the Somerset Partnership NHS Foundation Trust, um, and we're soon to be merging as one big um, trust, but we are based here at Musgrove Park Hospital. Excellent. Thank you. So, Working in a, in a library service in one hospital, but there's quite a lot of change um, at the moment. Yeah, planned. Yeah. yeah. So now, in your day-to-day -day work, you identified an opportunity where you could work more proactively with staff who were new to your trust. So could I just ask you, what idea did you have? Um, so when library users particularly in the Somerset Partnership um, registered with the library service, they would use our website um, and they'd be sort of, these people would be off site, so they'd be um, working for a hospital in Bridgewater or Burnham-on-Sea. They wouldn't sort of necessarily have face-to-face -face contact with us at the library um, on that initial stage. So previously, we would have processed these library registrations um, by sending the user um, a card and a, and a brief letter that basically said, thank you, here's your library card and here's our contact details. So it was, it was a limited amount of information that we were sending people who um, registered online, basically. Okay, thank you. So, um, and before we understand a little more about what you did, Please, can you tell us um, about the template that you use to share your, to plan your ideas? And I'll just show a copy of that template now. Yep, this is, so this was developed sort of by the quality improvement team um, at the hospital. We have a quality improvement librarian working um, within the library service um, in our team here at Musgrove. And she sort of developed this um, basically template which is based on plan, do, study, act. So it's like a series of prompts that help you think about your problem, your um, area for improvement, um, and sort of focus um, the sort of steps that you're going to use to um, enact that sort of change and sort of monitor whether it's been successful or not, and then um, reflect on it afterwards, basically. Excellent. So um, this is a great resource that we can all use, this template created here in Taunton. But going back to the induction, what did you do? We ended up devising a sort of template email, so a signature that we could send to users who registered off-site um, that gave them more information on so um, how to request books, um, registering for Open Athens, Knowledge Share, all of the different library resources that we have. And it was basically highlighting them to this user group, particularly how to request books, because obviously people, um, we can post things out to them, but in the past that wasn't sort of made um, very clear with just sending a card in the post. So it was really to kind of give them more details when a face-to-face -face induction wasn't um, available. Okay, thank you. So you had to go, you put your idea into practice. Was there anything that happened that you didn't expect? Um, we 
it was sort of difficult to measure the impact and the numbers that sort of directly um, sort of benefited from this, but we did see a reduction on the number of follow-up queries that we have um, in the library on things such as how do I get books and um, where's Open Athens because we were providing that to them. I mean, we did we did kind of expect or hope that would be the case, um, and we have seen an increase in hits um, on the website for things like um, Knowledge Share and uh, Open Athens and also the Oxford Handbooks, which you access electronically through Open Athens. So we could see that um, those things were getting more footfall um, and, and possibly I'd, we'd like to correlate it as a result of doing this is a significant part, yes. Mm. So your idea initially was to um help uh, people who uh, were new to your trust to um, get the resources and understand how to get your uh, yes, open yes. Athens logins, that sort of thing. But actually it also had um, a bit of an impact on the work you did in that you were, um, you, uh, it reduced the number of times people were asking you those basic questions. Yeah, definitely. Um, we'd often very quickly get an email back saying, you know, we've said thank you for registering, but then somebody would say, well, how do I get books? And it's like, well, we could have answered that when we told them thank you for registering. So it's <laughs> made it, it, yeah, it has um, had a, an impact in improving things, yes. Excellent. Yeah, win-win. <laughs> <laughs> so having reflected on what you did, did you decide to change anything or tweak anything? Yes, we. It's kind of an ongoing process because um, keeping these this template of what we send people up to date does require time to review it because obviously resources everyone will be aware are always changing and um, the sort of ways we like to try and make it easier for people to access change. Um, and we also ended up creating sort of individual emails for different user groups. So. Even at Chedden Lodge, for example, um, it's a sort of mental health site. We'd have consultants there, but also HCAs and junior doctors. There'd be different user groups and medical students as well. So it made sense to um, sort of highlight specific resources to say the medical students, we have resources for learners on our website. So we've sent them that particular thing, whereas a consultant might not be interested in that as much. So we send them things about how to use the databases. Um, so we tailored the induction templates based on the, the type of user as well, which came out of doing this initially, having a blanket one for everybody, we've then tailored it to different user groups. Mm, fantastic. So you basically um, looked at something you were doing and took a process with which many of us are familiar, um, that's inductions, and you spotted an opportunity to make this better for the workforce in Thornton. And yeah. having thought about those you missed um, or missed the inductions, um, you then have contacted them with the specific resources that they needed, as you've just, just described. Um, so, and it enabled new stuff in the trust to access the resources they needed, plus saved you and your colleagues some time. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's really good to hear how that's developing and you're starting to think more broadly um, about this across the system and build on your initial idea. So. Thank you, Natalie, for sharing this idea with us all. No, thank you. Um, and this concludes our first webinar that looks at practical ways all library and knowledge specialists can support outcome three. Um, I've put up on the screen um, both my name and uh, Natalie's name, and do get in touch with us if you'd like to know more. Thank you. <laughs>